Hey there, my name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path, and this is your Must Know Monday for February 1st, 2021. I hope that your month is off to a great start, and Valentine's Day is very quickly approaching. If you'll remember last week, I showed you how to do the increases, decreases on these beautiful heart trios. You can still find this pattern for free on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. But today, I'm going to show you how to make a wider carrier bead that has hearts on it. Okay, and again, I'm making this pattern completely for free for you at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. The specific file will have three files that you can download of three different wide carrier beads. So let's talk about what you're going to need for this project. The first thing you're going to need is you're going to need to go over to offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com and download the three files, okay? So this is the one I'm going to show you how to do today. It is a striped um, heart carrier. I've not done that one yet. Um, the second file is just a plain heart. It has a large heart and two smaller hearts. And then the third file actually has a little bit of a rainbow heart on it, just like this. So you have three different files and they each use different beads. For the one I'm gonna show you today, you are gonna need about one gram of DB753, and that's a red, but again, you can use any red that you have in your stash. I'm gonna be using about a gram of DB200, which is a white size 11 Delica bead. Again, any white bead that you have will work. You're gonna need a size 10 or 12 needle. You're gonna need your favorite beading thread. You're gonna need two acrylic carrier beads and you're gonna need some E6000 glue. So let's go ahead and get started. Once you've gone to the website and you've downloaded your carrier patterns, you'll notice on the first page of your pattern, it has a color. So this is the red. This is what's gonna be my number A on the pattern. The number here, DB, stands for Delica Bead. 753 is my color, okay? Matte opaque red, and then I'm gonna use 161 of those beads to make one carrier bead. Then you'll notice here, it says white, and that's my number B in the pattern. DB, again, means Delica Bead. 200 is the color number, and that's white. And I'm gonna need about 177 of those. On page two, if you like, you can go by your bead chart. So you'll see here, this is your complete bead chart. And then page three is of your actual, what we call word chart, okay? So L here in parentheses simply means we start from left to right. And R simply means we're gonna go from right to left. The number in parentheses is the amount of bead we're gonna pick up. And the letter next to it is the color that we will pick up from that first page. So on this first row, we're going to pick up all the beads at one time. And then when we get to the next row, you'll see it says that we will pick up seven A's. This doesn't mean that we will pick up seven A's at one time. This simply means we will pick up seven A's for this row. Before we can actually start on our pattern, we have to do a little bit of prep work. So I have two acrylic carrier beads. So the length of these beads, and I'm gonna put them here on the roller so that you can see. So this is the length of them, and this is the width of our carrier. All right, now our carrier is a double carrier, so we need two of these together. So to do that, I'm gonna take a little bit of E6000 glue, and I'm gonna put a little dab of glue right here in the middle of the carrier. And then if I've got just a, just a tiny little bit that I can put on the ends here, I'll put them on the ends as well. Go ahead and close up your glue so it doesn't seep out or anything. And I've got any excess, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of get that off. Now I'm gonna take my second carrier bead and I'm going to attach it to the first. The biggest thing is we wanna make sure that the holes are lined up in the carrier. If there is a little bit of glue on the outside, that is okay. 
and I'm just going to take that carrier, make sure it's completely lined up, and then I'm going to set it to the side so it can dry. I have one here that I started a little while ago that has been drying just a little bit. It's still a little wet, and you can see that it's off just a little bit from where I've had it setting on my tray. So the good thing is, if you want to, you can actually take like a needle or something like that and put inside of these so it, that it will keep them lined up. Um, that always works really well if you want to do that. Um, the biggest thing is just check them before they start to get 100% dry to make sure that they are lined up and you are happy with the alignment of them because we need to get um, stretch cord or beading wire or something through these holes, okay? So I'm just going to set those back down where they were drying and then I'm going to get ready to start. So you can put on a stop bead if you want to. So I have a little purple bead here that I'm going to use as my stop bead. And I'm going to put this bead on. And I'm going to bring it down. And I want to leave about an 8 inch tail here. And where my stop bead is at, I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come back up through that stop bead again. Just This will just hold our beads on for just a few minutes. All right. I'm putting that on there for just a minute. So now if you look at row one, and I'm gonna put a little mark here so that I know I'm doing row one. I've got A, B, A, B, A, B. So it's just an alternate pattern of A, B until I have 13 beads threaded on. So let's go ahead and thread those on. So we start with red and white until we have 13. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we start with red and we end with red and I'm going to double count to make sure I have 13. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and thirteen. And I'm going to bring these down all the way to where my stop bead is here. Okay. So now when we look at the next page or the next row here, that was row one and two. So row three says we are going to put on 7A. That doesn't mean, again, that I'm going to put them all at one time. I'm going to put them individually on. So I'll be putting seven beads on this row. So I'm going to, from where I'm at here, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so that way maybe it'll, you'll be able to see a little better because we started at the left and worked to the right. Now we're going to go to the right and work to the left. So I'm picking up an A. I'm going to skip the very last A and go back through the B. Now I'm going to kind of keep my fingers on that bead and I'm going to pull that through. And again, these two beads need to sit side by side. If they don't sit side by side, then make them sit that way. Okay, so just like that. I pick up an A, skip an A, and go through the next B. Put my finger on it, pull that thread, until now, those beads are on top of each other. Pick up an A, skip an A, and go through my B. Pick up an A, skip my A, and go through the B. And you'll notice how each bead is just sitting on top of each other just like this. Pick up an A, skip an A, and go through the B. Pick up an A, skip an A, and go through the last B on the row. So now here's the deal. I have picked up, let me get this done here. Okay, so if I count the A's that I have added for this row, I have added one, two, three, 
four, five, six. So I still have to add one more A. The only problem is if I skip an A, there's no B to go through out here. So this is where we have to pull off our stop bead. And this is the odd count kind of turnaround. So I pick up my final A on the row. This is my tail thread here, all right? I've got that tail thread just kind of wrapped around my hand or my finger, and I'm gonna take the needle and I'm gonna go under that tail thread. I do not want this bead to go under this thread. So I pull, and you notice how this bead is still staying on this side. And then I take my needle and I'm gonna come back through that same A again. So when I pull it, that A is now in place and you'll notice that my tail has moved up one bead and that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Okay, so that was, let's get our pattern out. That was row three. So row four is six B. So we're only gonna pick up Bs on this row. And so this is a really easy row to do. All I have to do is pick up a B and basically come through the next A that's sticking up. So I skip a B, go through an A, and that is going to pop that bead in place. Pick up a B, skip a B, and go through an A. Pick up a B, skip a B, go through an A. So the start of this pattern is basically gonna be the same until we get to the heart in the middle of our piece. So all we're doing is just working down the row, picking up those beads. So we have this striped pattern that we've got started here. So that was row four. So row five says we're gonna pick up seven A. So I'm gonna mark that so that I know I've got that. Now remember, I'm working back the other direction. I know that my odd count turnaround's coming up because over here's this tail thread. So I pick up an A, and then I come through the next B sticking up. And you'll notice I'm not flipping my piece back and forth. I'm just kind of working up and down. So that way I don't get anything turned around on this piece. And all I'm doing is simply picking up an A, skipping an A, and going through a B all the way down my piece. And I'm back here to this turnaround. Here's my tail thread. I'm gonna kind of keep the tail thread tight around my finger, loosen it up enough that I can get my needle under there, pull it back tight, and I'm gonna pull the thread, and then come back through my bead again. So that now I'm ready for the next row. So we just completed row five of our pattern. So with the free pattern, again, you can get it off the beaded path, beadstore.com. You are going to continue doing your rows until you finish row 52, all right? If by some chance, you just totally don't understand the turnaround, we are gonna link right below here in the description box several of my odd count videos where I have also showed this turnaround. So that way you will have a more in-depth explanation of the turnaround. So let's go ahead and get the strip to the size that we need and I'll be right back with you. So once you have your word chart complete, this is what your strip should look like. Your strip should be about one and three quarter inches long and a little over a half inch wide. Once you have that, you're ready to prep now your double carriers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, before we actually put these in, we're gonna take our short tail thread and we're gonna get rid of this tail thread. 
So I'm just gonna thread my needle on here. And then I'm just going to start stitching through the beads to get rid of this thread. And again, it does not matter how you stitch through as long as you cannot see threads across your beads. And as you pull your threads, make sure you pull them tight so you don't see any kind of thread in between here. And once you're happy with it and you're, you know that it's secure and it's not gonna come out, then you can go ahead and trim this short thread. I'm gonna stitch through just a few more beads here before I do that. Pull that thread tight. I'll use my little nippers here. Pull that thread tight and cut. So now I'm gonna use my E6000 glue again. I'm gonna take just a little bit of the glue and I'm gonna put here on the back side of the carrier. Make sure to close up your glue good so it does not dry out. And I'm gonna take that glue and I'm gonna lay it down on top of the hearts. And I'm gonna fold my piece over so that now this is what I should have. If you look closely, you'll notice that it's almost like a zipper. And if we push it together, you can see it's gonna fit together. But now we actually have to zip it closed. So my thread is coming out of this bottom right-hand bead. So I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come up through the bottom left bead. And I'm gonna leave it kind of loose right now so you can see. You'll want to pull the thread tight. So I'm coming out of the left bead. So I'm gonna come to the right and I'm gonna go through that next bead on the right that's sticking up, which is gonna be a white bead. I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come to the bead on the left that's sticking up, which is gonna be a red bead. So I think you're able to see that when we come to the right side, we're gonna be going through the white bead that's sticking up and we come to the left side, we're gonna go through the red bead that's sticking up. And I'm just going through the very next bead, sticking up all the way down my strip here. So that when I come and I come through the last bead here on the left, you can see that the piece is zipped up. You can't tell where I started and stopped, except for right here. You'll notice that these two beads here are not connected by a thread. So my thread is coming up out of this left-hand bead. So I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna come down through the bead on the right-hand side here. Pull that through, and then I'm gonna go up through the bead on the left again, so that now those beads are connected and that strip is completely done. So I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna zip it through to get rid of this thread, and then I'm gonna cut this thread off. And you can see how cute that this little beaded bead is gonna be. So let me go ahead and get this finished and I'll be right back with you. 
So once you have all the carriers made that you want to make, you can then turn it into a necklace or a bracelet or whatever you want. So you can see here, I've done some big carriers and then I've used the patterns that are for sale on my website to do smaller carriers and to put the word love. So I've taken two pieces of soft flex wire. This is what they call fine wire. It's a 0.014 diameter with 21 strands. And you can see here, I've got my two pieces. My top piece, I've threaded on a little four millimeter purl in between each of those. And my bottom piece here has a six millimeter purl in between each one of those beads. So once I get the front done, then I'm ready to start on the sides of my necklace. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take both pieces of wire and I'm gonna separate them for now. And if they're uneven, you can go ahead and you can trim off any little excess piece that you have here. But I'm gonna start with a six millimeter bead on each wire. And I'm just gonna kinda let those fall for now. Then on each wire, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put on a four millimeter bead. Now, over both wires, I'm gonna take a six millimeter bead and I'm going to thread that over both wires. So when I pull this down, we wanna get everything untwisted here. And when you pull it down, you want it to look something like this. So I've taken my tulip awl and I have kind of taken each of these six millimeter pearls and I've gone through both sides of the pearl. Sometimes your pearls have smaller holes where the actual paint that they put on the pearl, if you're not using a real pearl, you're just using like a glass pearl, um, that can cover up the holes. So I've kind of gone through and I've, I guess you could say I've culled um, these pearls and I'm just going to thread pearls over both strands of the wire until I get it to the length that I want. So I'm going to continue to thread on my pearls until I get it to the length that I already have decided upon on this other side. Now that I have the same length as I did over here, I'm ready to add the other part of my clasp. So to add the clasp, it's pretty simple. We're going to take a, this is just a two by two crimp tube and I'm gonna thread that over both wires. Then I'm gonna take a wire protector. I'm gonna take both wires because I'm using a thinner wire here. I can get both of them through. So I'm gonna take both wires and I'm gonna go up one side and I'm gonna come down the other side, just like this. I'm gonna thread my toggle bar on. You can see I did my heart here, so this is gonna be my bar here. And then I'm gonna take these two wires and I'm gonna come back through that crimp tube, just straight back down through it. And I'm gonna hold the bar and I'm gonna pull the crimp tube straight down just like this making sure I don't have any spaces and it's exactly how I want it. Now I'm gonna leave just a little bit of room here because I'm gonna put on a crimp cover as well. So I'm gonna take my crimping pliers. Remember you have a back hole that's shaped like a kidney bean and a front oval hole. So I'm gonna put this in the back hole first and I'm going to press and you see there it turns that crimp into like a little um, kidney bean now and it gives you your little indention there. So I'm going to come back from the front and I'm going to press to that inside hole. Now I know that this is secure so then I can take because I know these two wires will not go back down through here. I can take and I can trim those wires and then I will take my crimp cover and I'm gonna put it in the front hole of my crimping pliers. 
I'm going to put it there and press. And I'm gonna get it nice and situated here so that now I have a new necklace to wear for Valentine's Day. So guys, as you can see, this new carrier necklace is going to be fantastic for Valentine's Day. Remember, you can get the wide carrier bead patterns. There's three of those completely for free on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com, as well as the smaller carriers and the love that is for sale on there as well. As always, we carry Delica beads, we carry the carrier beads, anything that you're gonna need for this project. So I do hope that you'll check those out. Now guys, I have something so spectacular for you next week and I cannot wait. I'm gonna be doing a collaboration video and there's gonna be two days worth of videos and they're gonna be back to back. So make sure you come back on Monday for an awesome new collaboration video. We'll see you guys later. Hope you have a great week and a great start to your February. Thank mm -hmm. you.